In this project, we will numerically validate the data provided by the paper named Control of Flow Past a Dimpled Circular Cylinder. Now, as you can see in this slide, we have extracted the figure 1 of the paper, in which you can see the schematics of the cross-sectional and side views of the dimpled cylinder. Two graphs where you can compare our CFD simulation results with the papers. Under the general setup tab, you can see different buttons from scales to units. By clicking on the scale, uh, also by clicking on report quality, again in the console tab, the Fluent software will, uh, will give you the quality report for your mesh. For example, you can see the maximum aspect ratio of your mesh, uh, maximum orthogonal quality, and etc. After double clicking on the viscose button, a new window will appear. In the appeared window, you will see that uh, we have chosen two equation a standard k epsilon to solve for our fluid flow. The standard k epsilon model is one of the most renowned model for solving the turbulent fluid flows. And actually, two equation k epsilon model allows the determination of both a turbulent length scale and time scale by solving two separate transport equations. Now after expanding the fluid section under the materials, you can see that water and liquid material have been added to this project. In order to add a new material, you just have to right click on fluid and then select new. And as for the outlet boundary, you can see that the type of this boundary is defined to be outflow. Now outflow boundary condition is used uh, when we do not have any idea about the pressure or velocity of the fluid flow in that section. Also, in order to define these report types, just have to right click on report definitions and then going over the new and after that going over the force report, then you can see that uh, drag or lift or moment or force reports are available. After double clicking on the initialization button, a new window will appear showing you different methods of initialization, hybrid and standard. Now in the standard initialization method, you get to choose the first amounts and values for the first iteration of the simulation progress. These values refer to the values used in the first iteration of the simulation progress and if you choose the values for each parameter wisely, your simulation progress will finish sooner. It should be mentioned that you can also choose the first values and in, or the initial values by just clicking on the compute from drop down list and clicking on one boundary. For example, by clicking on compute from all zones, the software will automatically average the values in different zones and boundaries and put those values in the initial values for the software. After double clicking on the wrong calculations button in the appeared section under the parameters part by just defining the number of iterations and then clicking on calculate button, the software will start the simulation process. Now in this contour, you can easily see the pressure distribution around our dimpled cylinder. Also, you can see the stagnation point in front of the cylinder where it has the maximum pressure. And in this slide, you can see the 2D contours of velocity and the wakes that have, have been generated behind our dimple cylinder. Now, as was mentioned earlier in previous slides, we had defined two different reports. Uh, the first report was the lift coefficient and the second report was drag coefficient. We're going to use the amount for each of these reports in order to validate the data provided by the paper. Now, as was mentioned in previous slides about the purpose of this project, which is to validate the results obtained by the paper for lift and drag coefficient, after calculating the values of lift and drag coefficient in our CFD simulation, we can easily compare our data with the papers, and then you can see that we have validated the data obtained by the paper. Finally, a summary of different settings and setup that we have used in our project is presented to you in the slide. Obtain the mesh file and also the full training movie by purchasing this product. Now as you can see in this slide, we have extracted the figure 1 of the paper in which you can see the schematics of the cross-sectional and side views of the dimple cylinder. Now in the reference paper, several patterns have been considered for the placement of dimples on the cylindrical surface. 
In present work, the DF tie pattern has been used. This means that the dimples completely fill the surfaces. The main purpose of this work is to investigate the aerodynamic forces, including drag and lift force, on the outer surface of the cylinder, and also to calculate drag and lift coefficient. As was mentioned in previous slide about validating the paper results for the lift and drag coefficient, we have brought to you two graphs where you can compare our CFD simulation results with the papers. To benefit from Mester CFD services including simulation, consultation and training, contact our experts via info at mestercfd.com.